Hey guys, it's Derek with the Middle Park Minute, where we're throwing strikes and getting likes, hitting dingers, and getting listeners back again with another podcast. Uh, we are 60 some odd days in a row, 61, 62, something like that, in a row of creating a daily podcast, your only daily Brewers podcast, uploaded every morning at 5 30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we are on Castbox, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Radio Public, Apple, Amazon, Spotify. I think I repeated a couple there. Uh, and of course, Anchor. So if you guys want to hear fresh episodes, check back every morning, 5.30 a.m. Central Time, Standard Time. You can also subscribe, uh, get those notifications going so you get a little alert when there's a new podcast. Uh, we are going to just talk about the game. This could be another brief one. The, a lot of these are going to be ra- rapid fire podcasts just because there's not, uh, we're kind of. There's that ramp up, the news in the beginning of spring training. There's games, and then there's kind of any injuries and stuff like that. Right now we got, you know, we're kind of just in the thick of the spring training where, yeah, the games mean something. They're fun to watch, but at the same time, they they don't mean something. You know what I mean? It's guys playing, getting warmed up. So it'd be like watching a practice, basically. That's what we're doing here. Uh, so the Brewers fell uh seven to four today to the guardians we moved to three and five on the young spring training um big key things for today is we got hauser we got wilson pitching uh streslecki milner piamps cousins bauman really all the meat and potatoes of the guys are kind of fighting out jobs and positions and whether they're gonna be a starter or not um we had four runs on five hits uh one error uh, where Cleveland had seven runs on eight hits and one error. Uh, the big piece here today that I wanted to focus on is Bryce Wilson had a very clean outing with four strikeouts, uh, gave up no runs. Uh, but Adrian Hauser, Adrian Hauser went a full two innings today, um, did give up some some runs or a run, but at the same point in time, uh, he's a ground ball pitcher, so that's that's good to see. I think he's a dark horse that's going to be a stability piece, whether he falls into the bullpen or he becomes a starter. Uh, it re- will really be interesting to see where they swing Adrian Hauser. Uh, so I really like what, what we saw there today. That's kind of a typical Adrian Hauser-esque uh, outing. Uh, Strzelecki and Milner, it's great to get them work. Uh, they did get uh, Strzelecki did give up a run. Uh, Milner went with solid zeros across the board. Uh, Piamps and Cousins gave up some runs. Cousins is another piece that we want to do well. Um, he he means a lot to this bullpen. Um, and Piamps could. It really could. But these guys are, are going to have these bad ones, and then they're going to bounce back. They're, it's just getting the work and getting the experience and kind of playing the, the pitch clock game. Um, so... That being said, that's going to bring me to my next topic. I really don't have a lot to talk about to the game today. Like, real, really wasn't anything. Uh, Montesero hit a home run. Um, that's really about the only offensive highlight that I can highlight today. Uh, continued hitting, of course, but uh, you know, we that's that's to be expected. These guys are going to hit. Um, hitters need less time than these pitchers do. That's the whole spring training is really about the pitchers. If you listen to, um, there's actually a, uh, posted on the Facebook page. There's a interview that Brandon Woodruff did with Dominic Catronio, um, talking about that, where it's more about the pitchers getting their 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 ramp up and stuff, and that's where it's really important. Um, but. So today's game was two hours and 40 minutes. And I talk about this every time and every day when we talk about this because there's an important factor here. We want to know how long these games are going. Now, two hours and 40 minutes is not not terribly less time. I think yesterday's was close to the same. Um, The one thing, though, that I was thinking about and kind of spinning through my head as we're, we're pitch clock conversations and things like that uh, and we'll highlight later in the episode a couple a couple players are very complimentary and uh, there's still some things that are we don't know and we're trying to work out here. Um, but the big piece of this is okay. So if you've got a game that lasts two hours or two hours and twenty minutes, what is going to be the window now? Are they going to change how they serve beer at games? 
you know, it always used to be the seventh inning and, you know, the game was three and a half hours, four hours, you know, so like it wasn't a big deal, right? Is there going to be less time? Are you, and then my other question that goes along with that, are you going to be wanting to get up as frequently if you know that an inning is going to be shorter? You know, if you're going to want to meander, if you know the Brewers are going to be right back up to bat. So those are all things that we're, we're all going to figure out as fans together. You know, are you going to have as much time to run to the beer stand, run to the bathroom, go get a snack, you know, and do all that stuff? I mean, I know there's some people that are diehard, sit in their seats the whole time, you know, and that's great, and get the beer from the beer vendor that walks around. Those are all answers to those questions. That's great. But are you going to, I mean, are you going to have time to eat your $8 hot dog? That's why they have the $4 option, right? Because they need a cheaper option. You need to eat quicker. I don't know. These are all questions I have. And it's like, are they going to see a drop in, in beer sales? Are they going to see people eating less and getting up out of their seats less? I don't know. I mean, these are all things I'm thinking about. It's like, do you, are you really going to want to get up out of your seat when you know the action is going to be faster? Um, does it change the experience as a, as a fan at the baseball game? So I think it will a little bit. I definitely will. I think it will change for certain people. Um, people will still get up. I, I mean, that's that's a fact of the nature. People have to go to the bathroom. People have to eat. Those kind of things. So those things are going to happen. But is it going to change the the overall experience in the ambiance? Because before when I went to the game, I you know I would make a stop at the team store. I'd go find my seat for a little bit. Then I'd go maybe get some food. I uh, wander the kids area with my kid different experiences like that, different things. Is that going to change how we experience baseball? Is it going to change how we operate? Are you going to be able to watch more of the game? Are you going to stay for a whole game? Like if you were one who kind of tried to get out before the crowd let out, are you going to stay for the whole game now because shorter time? Um, are people going to be drunker or are they going to be less drunk? Are people going to pregame more before the game or are they going to drink more in the, I don't know. These are all factors. I, I, I just left me some interesting questions in my head today when I was thinking about this. Like, you know, and are are we gonna are we gonna see different cutoffs? Are we gonna see like a sixth inning cutoff versus a seventh inning cutoff for beer? Or you know what I mean? Like, are they gonna move it up, change it because then you've got an hour left of the game? Um, are they gonna regulate that? You know, is like the state's gonna regulate that, or the the local police department's gonna gonna change that? We don't know. These things are all things that could affect the quality of the experience of the game, uh, especially with with a team like Milwaukee where the tailgating atmosphere is really huge and the ballpark experience going out to have a drink and, you know, the, the, the good time that is Miller Park, is it going to change? Is the baseball going to change? Is the experience of baseball? Yes, we know the game is going to change, but is the experience going to change? That is what I ask. Uh, so I'm going to leave that open for feedback. I'm probably going to post a couple discussion topics on that. Uh, I really want to discuss this. I, I mean, what what do you think? Do you think it's going to change? I think it might change our experience overall. I really do. Um, because you're not just looking at, you, you know, before you knew you had time. Now you don't have time. Now you're going to have less time. It's going to be cut back. You may say, oh, two hours, 40 minutes. Well, if the game's three hours, you know, that's it's only 20 minutes. But that changes. You, you know, cutting your time down in the stadium changes a lot of things. You know, a lot of factors. So we'll see how it all plays out. I mean, I personally think it will change the experience a little bit. It'll be a little more rushed experience. Which I don't know necessarily like to, the sound of that. I I always enjoyed like an afternoon at the ballpark where you know you're gonna spend some time and you knew you were gonna be there three to four hours or three and a half hours or whatever it may be, and just enjoy it. But it's definitely gonna change it for sure. Um. So the the new the new thing is people are kind of and I've seen this kind of pop up on Twitter and a couple threads. Uh, people are comparing the the game now to to what the um, Savannah Bananas have done and why why they've made baseball more exciting. Um, but the MLB is going to execute these things poorly. So we're, we're talking about the pitch clock and the different rules. Now I'm not going to break down all the Savannah Bananas rules. They call it banana ball. It's a totally different 
game of baseball. Uh, go check it out. Uh, Brew Pack actually did a very awesome video on it. So shout out to Brew Pack. His video was very good. Um, and like I talked about, I'm going to talk about some of the national stuff that comes along with this pitch clock because we're still f- figuring it out. We're all in the early stages here. Uh, there's some details that need to be ironed out, and Matt Scherzer is really highlighting these. Um, Garrett Cole had his first outing. He was saying um, that he likes it. Uh, it's going to be great. It's faster. Get home, get home quicker. It's going to be awesome. A lot of these guys and a lot of guys in this industry are, are looking at the the benefit of less time of games, less you know, less time they have to be at work. Well, then are they going to start taking less money? I mean, is it going to cost us less to go to the baseball game because they're they're you know, it's a shorter game? Are they going to cut ticket prices? No, they're going to raise them. They're going to keep raising them. Don't don't think otherwise. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's that. These are all topics, They're just pieces of this, and we'll we'll continue this conversation. Uh, but I really want to know what what do you think it's going to affect your experience? Uh, we had a strikeout that took twenty nine seconds the other day. Um, that's a record. That's like the fastest can be. Um, and we'll continue to see different new things come up along the way. Um, it's just, it is what it is. You're going to, you're going to experience the game of baseball. Not, they've like totally, it's like taking something you normally experience and then doing it a completely different way. You know, start by putting your shoes on first and then try and put your pants on see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. That was the worst reference possible, but that's what I came up with at the top of my head. Uh, they're talking about um, some potential rookie of the year candidates. I want to see if the Brewers have anybody on there. At the envelope, uh, Jordan Walker from St. Louis. No, we don't. They don't consider any of our guys. Um, Corbin Carroll, Francisco Alvarez. Uh, uh, yeah, Francisco Alder- Alvarez. I would think that if our guys get called, they would be in the conversation. Um, I like this Freelick. I think Freelick would be that guy. Uh, But they might hold him back. So we'll see what happens with that service time. That's all service time manipulation. So, uh, And right now they're figuring the best way to do that. So Um, some of the things that I have seen lately um, have really kind of highlighted all this pitch clock stuff. So, I, I mean, I don't know how much I want to spin yarns about the pitch clock before we get too far into the season, but I really like having this just brief conversation about it and asking how you think it will. And the, the, I'm really open in the discussion up. So comment below. Let me know what you guys think, uh, where this pitch clock is going to take us and where we're going to go from there. Um, one impressive arm that we've seen right now, and this guy is really lighting up the gun. Um, Abner Uribe, who is not playing, um, is not set to be a, like a roster spot. He doesn't have a lock spot. Uh, he's still got some options. Um, but he is set to be really good. He's got a 99 mile an hour sinker. Um, and he's really got good stuff. He's been been showing off in spring training. Uh, they've used him a handful of times already. He's been doing really well. Um, I look forward to kind of seeing what he can do. Uh, he's a top, he was a top prospect, so he's, he's getting some work and I think they're going to see what they, what they like and see where they can fit him in later this season. So that's a face to look forward, forward to. As far as news, like I said, there's not a whole lot, uh, Journal Sentinel's just kind of covering a two-time Olympian, uh, Eddie Alvarez is working working on getting in the uh, in to the majors, and then the other piece, BrewerFanatic.com. We're affiliated. Told you this a hundred times. Uh, Milwaukee Brewers X Factors, Matt Arnold, and whether this is really new management. So basically, this article is breaking down: Is Matt Arnold a continuation of the David Stearns era? Is he just an arm of the David Stearns era, or is he completely new? 
Um, in my thought process, you can read the article for yourself, but I I feel like he's gonna gonna be very similar, and I'm I'm assuming that's why they went to him. Um, David Stearns wanted to go forward and get a bigger job and and a bigger market, and it, you know it, it, he wanted to go to New York. That's that's what it came down to. Um, maybe he didn't want to deal with all the con. Excuse me. He didn't want to deal with all the contract negotiations he was about to, and and leave a stain on his record. I mean, he already stained himself by trading away Josh Hader, so maybe he didn't want to stain his record with Corbin Burns, Freddie Peralta, Eric Lauer, Deb- yeah, all these young guys that we're we're going to deal with. Uh, maybe that's just where he didn't want to be, and so he got out of it, and you know, resigned or stepped down, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and Matt Arnold was the next man up. Next man up. He's in the on deck circle, ready to go. And we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out for Matt Arnold. I mean, maybe Matt Arnold has a, is really aggressive, makes these signings. We don't know. I, I and I've said it a time and time and again. His tenure is going to be judged based on what happens with Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Willie Adamas, Eric Lauer, all these guys. What does he build for the future? Is this team going to die at this era, or are we going to rebuild for the future? And are we rebuilding? Is that the process we're in? They haven't really clearly stated it, and I think that's where some of the, some of my anger and some of my rage comes in as a Brewers fan, because I don't know if they're clearly restating it or what they're going to do. Uh, and we'll see that. We'll see the future of the crew get shaped here. If I think it's going to be this season. I hate to say it. But if there's trades come trade deadline and we're not in it, uh, it's going to be it's going to be the end of an era. So get prepared, guys. Get prepared. That's really all I have in tonight's episode, guys. It was just a brief conversation. I really want to know how you guys feel about this. What, what do you think this is going to change the experience of Brewers baseball? As a whole, is it going to change what you do and how you time out the stadium? And um, are you going to spend more time in your seats? Are you going to eat less? Are you going to drink less? Uh, I know that this is Wisconsin, so people will drink regardless. I'm not saying that, but at the same time, it cuts down that ability. Ability. And do you think they're gonna they're gonna cut off drinking times and and change it to the the beginning of the sixth inning? Or you know, who knows? Um, these are all experiences and things that we're going to see here coming forward in the future. So let's, uh, let's hope for the best guys, but we'll, uh, we'll come at you at four o'clock, five o'clock somewhere tomorrow evening, and we'll do a live conversation. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about the salary cap, salary floor situation. And then we're also going to be talking about this. Um, I, I just want to get some feedback and I want to do it on a live fashion because I could, I can field the questions to people and ask, hey, what do you think? Where, where do you think this is going to go? So let me know what you think in the comments below or hit me in the DMs. As always, guys, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. And as always, go Brewers. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers.